Ever wondered what happens to your body when you play around with the clock of your meals? Welcome to the intriguing world of intermittent fasting. This isn't some trendy diet fad that's here today and gone tomorrow. It's a unique approach to eating that's been around since, well, practically the dawn of time. So, what exactly is intermittent fasting? Picture this. You're essentially splitting your day into two windows. One window is for eating and the other for fasting. There are different types of intermittent fasting, but a common one is the 16 8 method. That's 16 hours of fasting followed by an 8-hour window where you can eat. Now I know what you're thinking. 16 hours without food? Sounds like a long stretch, right? But remember, a good chunk of that time, you're sleeping. So really, it's not as daunting as it sounds. Now, let's get into the nitty-gritty of a 5-day intermittent fasting journey. Day 1, you're feeling pretty good. Day 2, maybe a little hungry. Day 3, your body's wondering what's going on. By days 4 and 5, your body starts to adapt, and you begin to experience some interesting changes, but hold your horses. I must emphasize, this video is meant to be informational guidance, not medical advice. While intermittent fasting can have some great potential benefits, it's not suitable for everyone. If you have any underlying health issues or are pregnant, it's important to consult with healthcare professionals before starting any major dietary changes. So, are you ready to delve deeper into the world of intermittent fasting? Are you curious to see what happens when you challenge your body's conventional eating schedule? Fasten your seatbelts as we embark on a five-day journey of intermittent fasting. But remember, always consult your healthcare professionals before making any major dietary changes. Day 1 to Day 2, the hunger games begin, but hey, it's not as bad as you think. Now let's talk about the initial discomforts of intermittent fasting. You've just embarked on a journey that's going to challenge your body's regular routine. And your body, being creature of habit that it is, might not be too thrilled about it at first. Imagine your body as a disgruntled employee who's just been told they have to work overtime. They might kick up a fuss initially, but eventually, they'll get in the groove. That's what's happening when you start feeling those hunger pangs and cravings. Your stomach is like, hey, weren't we supposed to have a snack around this time? But guess what? You're the boss here. You can manage these games by staying hydrated and opting for low-calorie drinks during your non-eating windows. Green tea anyone? Now moving on to the energy shifts. You might feel a little zapped at first. It's like your body's fuel gauge is red and it's frantically looking for the nearest petrol station. But you know what? The body is smarter than you think. It's a master adapter. It quickly that it needs to switch gears and look for alternate sources of energy. Remember, you're not depriving your body of fuel, you're just changing the fuel type. It's like switching from petrol to electric in a hybrid car. The transition might feel a bit bumpy, but once you pass that initial phase, it's smooth sailing. So here's a pro take it easy during the first couple of days. Don't push yourself too hard. Let your body adjust to this new routine. And most importantly, listen to your body. It might grumble a bit, but it's not going to let you down. So you've survived the initial hunger games and energy shifts. Buckle up as your body is now all set for some interesting metabolic changes. If you're finding this journey as intriguing as we are, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more health and wellness insights. Day 3 to Day 5, your body is now a fat-burning machine. Exciting, isn't it? We're now entering the phase where your body is starting to adapt to your new eating schedule. You've probably noticed a change in your energy levels, and maybe even a slight decrease in your cravings. But what's really happening behind the scenes? Around this time, your body may enter a metabolic state called ketosis. Now don't let the term scare you away. Ketosis is simply the process where your body, instead of relying on glucose for fuel, starts burning fat. Imagine that. All those stubborn fat stores you've been wanting to get rid of are now serving a purpose. They're being converted into ketones, which are then used by your body and brain for energy. That's right, your body is now a well-oiled fat-burning machine. But the magic of this phase doesn't stop at fat loss. There's also a potential for improved insulin sensitivity. Insulin, as you may know, is the hormone responsible for regulating blood sugar levels. When your body becomes more sensitive to insulin, it requires less of it to do its job. This shift can have numerous health benefits, including reducing the risk of type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And then, there's autophagy, a process that's been making headlines recently, Autophagy, which in Greek means self-eating, is a cellular cleanup crew. It's your body's way of getting rid of damaged cells and replacing them with new, functional ones. 
Some researchers believe that the fasting periods in intermittent fasting may enhance this process, potentially leading to a variety of health benefits. So there you have it. From day 3 to day 5, your body is undergoing some fascinating changes. It's transitioning from running on glucose to burning fat, potentially improving insulin sensitivity, and possibly even enhancing cellular cleanup. And just like that, your body has adapted to your new eating schedule. But wait, there's more to intermittent fasting than just weight loss. As we continue our journey into the world of intermittent fasting, we'll be exploring more than just the physical changes, so stay tuned. Now let's talk about the real deal, the health benefits of intermittent fasting. Yes folks, we're moving beyond the realm of weight loss and diving into the actual wellness perks that have been linked to this dietary approach. First up, we have cognitive function. Some studies suggest that intermittent fasting may help sharpen your mind. Think of it as giving your brain a gentle kickstart, a push to help it perform at its best. It's like turning your brain from a sluggish old computer into a sleek, high-speed laptop. But before you start fasting in the hopes of becoming the next Einstein, remember that these are early days in the research. More studies are needed to fully understand these cognitive effects. Next on the list is inflammation. Now, inflammation isn't always the bad guy. It's actually a vital part of our body's defense mechanism. But chronic inflammation? That's like having your body on constant high alert, which can lead to various health issues. Some research suggests that intermittent fasting may help reduce this type of inflammation. It's like giving your body's defense system a well-deserved break. Last, but certainly not least, we have cellular repair. During fasting periods, your body gets a chance to focus on maintenance. It's like closing for the night to clean up and restock. This process, known as autophagy, involves your body cleaning out damaged cells to make way for new ones. Think of it as your body's personal housekeeping service. But let's not forget, everyone's body is unique. The way your body responds to intermittent fasting may not be the same as your best friend, your neighbor, or that fitness influencer you follow on Instagram. It's important to listen to your body and adjust your approach as needed. Remember, intermittent fasting is not a one-size-fits-all approach. What works for one may not work for another. So let's discuss how to make if work for you. And as always, before you embark on any major dietary changes, it's crucial to consult with a healthcare professional. After all, your health is your wealth and it's worth investing in. So, you've made it past five days of intermittent fasting. Now what? Well of all, let's give you a round of applause. It takes determination and mental strength to venture into the world of intermittent fasting. Now that you've experienced some of the potential effects, it's time to discuss how you can make intermittent fasting work for you in the long run. Intermittent fasting isn't a one-size-fits-all diet, it's something you tailor to your needs, your body, and your lifestyle. That's why an individualized approach is crucial. Listen to your body. If you're feeling great and seeing benefits, that's fantastic. But if you're feeling fatigued or unwell, don't be afraid to adjust your fasting window or try a different method. Remember the goal is to improve your health, not compromise it. Next up is sustainability. Like any other dietary change, intermittent fasting needs to be sustainable to reap the benefits in the long term. If a 16 8 fasting schedule is too intense, try the 14 10 method. Maybe a 24-hour fast once a week suits you better. The key is to find a rhythm that fits your lifestyle, not the other way around. Lastly but most importantly, always consult healthcare professionals. Intermittent fasting can have profound effects on your body, and it's essential to have a healthcare professional guide you through it. They can provide personalized advice based on your health history and current condition. Remember, intermittent fasting is not suitable for everyone, especially for those with certain health conditions or pregnant women. So, you've made it this far, and you're ready to continue your journey with intermittent fasting. Fantastic. But remember, your journey is unique to you. Don't compare it to others. Focus on how you're feeling, the changes you're seeing, and how it fits into your lifestyle, and that's a wrap on our 5-day journey of intermittent fasting. Remember, research responsibly, prioritize your well-being and always consult your healthcare professionals. Until next time, stay healthy. If you enjoyed this journey and found it informative, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We'll be bringing you more health and wellness tips, so stay tuned.